Well, hello friends and neighbors. John, your whiskey neighbor here. Welcome to the kitchen table. Sun was beautiful, so I wanted to get out of the basement for this great video. I love these videos. What we're gonna look at here is 18 bottles and talk a little bit about the journey. This, of course, was inspired by Roy at Aquavite and his recycled reviews, but this will be my take on 18 whiskeys, the journey I've had with them, because now they are at their journey's end. Three, four. Thanks for staying with me through the break. Still adjusting to the concept of a journey's end, but you know what? These bottles have definitely been a journey for me. Some good, some less, uh, and we'll talk. I've got mostly scotch, an Irish, Canadian, and bourbon. So I've got a lot of bottles, so we'll get at it. First one up, this is Highland Park 10. I have to say, I didn't jump at Highland Park 10 because I've been a pretty big fan of the 12, even though I know it's faded over the years. I still like it, nice balance, but this, only X bourbon or it tasted like only X bourbon and good malt and I actually uh, you know enjoyed this at the beginning and it kept its 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 fresh light toffee caramel nature even though it's only 40 percent and and really good malt I like this and for the price around here I'd buy it again uh, change profiles this is Laphroaig 10. If you don't know Isla Scotch or Peated Scotch, then my immediate recommendation is don't start with this bottle. But this is a big bottle, big peat in here. A little bit ashy, you know, a uh, little bit medicinal. It's got some of those notes, but uh, you know, Laphroaig 10 is a classic. I, I wish I had a bottle of Ardbeg 10 to sort of talk comparison quick, but this was good. I will say personally, uh, about midway through, I fell out of like love for it and so it sat on the shelf for quite a while just half full but when I went back at it it really uh, seemed to still be expressive a little sweet lots of ash peat uh it was good I will definitely buy a uh, Laphroaig 10 again but I'm not running to it right now I've got some other peat bottles I'm more interested in still it's a standard uh let's go for just a nice Highland single malt this is an Oct 12 um I enjoyed it. Uh, really simple profile, but it tasted, uh, you know, kind of cleans the wrong word, but it's what I'm trying to go for. This was, uh, you know, light fruits, a little bit creamy in the mouth, uh, sweet. Uh, this is a nice gentle scotch. If you're new to scotch, this would be an easy recommend, uh, but it held together. It really didn't have any off-putting bitterness or whatnot, and all the way through, it was an easy pour. I'd buy an Oct 12 again. Okay, uh, let's go into, I've got a couple of bottles here that relate to a bit of my sherry journey. This is Glendronic 2009, it's a 10 year old, available only in Canada. Really like Gen Glendronic house style for its significant X sherry life. Uh, this was only PX sherry instead of usually the Oloroso that in the 12 that we're going for. Um, this was good and you know what, it opened up quite well. And I would say that the journey of this bottle was that it was pretty tight and it got significantly better. This got better, but for the price around here, I'm actually not going to buy it again. It's just a little too overpriced. Ah, this is almost a memory bottle. This Abelor 10. Uh, really, it compares to the Glendronic uh, 10 that we just talked about. You know, age stamp 10, mostly X Sherry. I couldn't quite tell. I thought it was all X Sherry, but when I did research on this, it fell in like a mix of X Bourbon and X Sherry. Uh, the memory lasted this whole bottle. I loved thinking of the stories of, of me and a good friend that were on the journey when we used to buy this fairly regularly. Um, but near the end, this bottle fell away. So it's a good bottle, but I know it's been discontinued in most markets. And so the pricing right now is actually higher than it should be. And for that reason, aside from the memory, I'm actually probably not going to buy it again. Okay, um, Glenfiddich Project XX, right? It's part of the experimental series. This Project 20 was, uh, you know, 20 people picked out casks, then they um, blended, the expert blended it together and released it. Now it was released nicely at 47%. Uh, I got it on a good deal and that made me thankful. 
challenge here is uh, it tends to be quite priced, quite pricey, and thankfully 47, as I said, so it's got a bit of backbone, and there's some spicing in here that I don't usually get from Glenfiddich, but it didn't grab me all the way through. About mid-bottle, I liked it quite a lot, and then it fell away. For those reasons that it just, to me, by the end, it was just, uh, didn't really hold my interest, and because of the price, another bottle I'm probably not gonna buy again. Okay, uh, this is my only blended scotch. Uh, you know, it's monkey shoulder. And I, I'm quite sure all of you uh, have had it or certainly know about it. It's, it's very, very popular. And, and I'll say, you know, nice presentation. In most markets, it's a great price. Here it's 43% and it's a blended malt. So no green. It's got a lot of nice things going for it. I, I will say my journey with it was fairly quick and rather uneventful. That said, it's a nice pour. When I see it on sale, I'll probably put it on the shelf again. So I guess I'll buy it again. That's my scotch. Uh, let's do a couple of internationals. So here I've got the half bottle of Nika whiskey from the barrel. Uh, this one actually you would think because of shortness, maybe I would go through pretty quick, but at 51.4%, uh, I don't know, I took my time. This was on the shelf for a while. This to me has a fair amount of wood in it and a fair amount of spice. And I like both of those things. This Nika from the Barrel is really tasty. Uh, it's a little bit aggressive for some, but uh, if you feel you like flavor in your whiskey, I can recommend this and I certainly will buy it again. My only Irish that's empty. Now this is interesting, Yellow Spot 12. You know, this was on my shelf for three years. That's a long time. And the whiskey and my experience of it definitely changed over time. So you talk about a journey, this one had one. Um, I really like Yellow Spot. It has a little, like sometimes too sweet, almost in that, uh, you know, uh, peach pear type sweetness. But thankfully I felt, uh, you know, it had a really nice richness that balanced the sweetness. That's the way I can take sweet if there's you know, not quite chewy, but something going on, and this has backbone. You know, this stands out as one of my top five Irish probably ever. And uh, now that I've finally been through this, I'll probably wait a bit for a special occasion. But once again, sometime, I'll definitely buy Yellow Spot again. Okay, heading into bourbon territory. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Look, I'll start with um, this one. This was number nine, Iowa whiskey. Uh, you know, this obviously was a, a team, I shouldn't say obviously, but with uh, Slipknot. And um, this one didn't change enough. I, I tried it up front, didn't like it. Lots of corn sweetness, uh, nuts about all sugary nature. Uh, and then I really wanted it to get better and I left it open for a long time, tried it again, tried it again, and it just didn't get better. The journey for me on this was a complete no. And I will not buy this again. Uh, then let's go to a, just a regular bourbon. This is just Elijah Craig, small batch, 47%. You know, uh, these bottles, these kind of regular staple bottles, it's tough to talk journey because uh, this one to me has a nice balance of oak and, and a little bit of uh, red apple fruit on there, I would say. Uh, and I like it. I like Elijah Craig. It holds my interest. It doesn't change this kind of standard release. Uh, didn't really evolve, but I liked it, and uh, I'm pretty sure that I will buy Elijah Craig again with that nice balance of spice and fruit in a sweet bourbon. Okay, now a uh, little more, I guess this isn't unusual, but it came out, what, last year, uh, Old Tub, and, uh, you know, it's funny because you watch reviews and people talk about, you know, it's unfiltered and it's Jim Beam, and, and then they talk about that peanut profile, and I have to say, to about here, I was like, yeah, okay, it's like a Jim Beam, I got it, I can get a little peanut. And then, like, did it ever change for me? Like, it could have been palate, it could have been, I don't know what it was, but from here down, every time I had it, I felt like I'd melted down some peanut brittle. It was, it was like, I, it was a lot of that. Not, I guess I'm being too over, over the top. But in my palate, it became the note that, that was there. Now, thankfully, you know, there's some, there's some good backbone in this one, and, and I liked it. Um, would I buy Old Tub again? I don't know. It was almost off balance with that note. So I like it. I'm on the fence. Really on the fence. Yeah, 
I'll probably buy it again because I pretty much like Jim Beam. All right. Uh, then I had, uh, this was an interesting, you know, this is uh, Legion bourbon. And so this, uh, we had, it's kind of, you know, Fred No and uh, who is the Japanese Suntory uh, blender. They kind of worked together, right, to try to get a bourbon, but then finished in, in uh, I think it was what, cherry and California wine? I hope so. Uh, wine and cherry cast. Woo! Uh, 47%. Um, I didn't get this up front. This one was a journey. This one up front, up front um, was uh, overbalanced into the wine finish, which I can I can like, but I tend to, to like my palate uh, struggles with wine finish, unless it's obviously done very, very well. But I will say this bottle changed and I liked it. And by the end, I liked it a lot. On a good sale, I actually would buy Legion again. Oh, right. I was in a bit of a finishing thing. Well, let's do, let's do this one. Basil Hayden. Oh, dark rye. No, I have rye. Well, yeah, okay. Not really bourbon. I have one more bourbon. I should have done that and then gone to rye. Uh, but I've shown it up here. So this is Basil Hayden dark rye. Um, interesting that a few comments on the review that I did said they really like it. You know, that it's one of their favorite ryes and, and, and good for them. Uh, for me, this one is an example of a finish that, that just overpowers the, the rye in here. And this, um, maybe because they actually added port in it, I should say. It, 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 it was so port forward. Now, if you really like heavy, thick wine port, like maybe you'll like it. But for me, I didn't like it up front and it did not change and I would not buy it again. This was my last bourbon. This is uh, Opadon um, French Oak and Oloroso Sherry. This was an interesting bottle. Uh, I think many certain bourbon drinkers would be put off by this because it's not like the Legion finish. Uh, this one, you know, the, the, the woody, spicy, not woody because woody is good for bourbon, but the spicy, nutty nature I was getting off of the French Oak was strong and the, the Sherry was almost furry. I don't know how to explain that. Like it was just like uh, thick, thick. I liked it. I actually liked it. And I'm really glad that I, I had a chance to try it. Uh, it. It was too thick to really enjoy again and again. Uh, if I could get this for a half bottle or something, you know, maybe I'd buy it. But another bottle of this, I don't think I'm going to buy it again. Okay. Um, then another rye, very simple rye. This is just bullet rye. Yeah, sourced. Classic MGP 95.5. Um, it's got some definite spice. It's rough on the edges. A little bit of green fruit on it. Maybe that's the herbal note. I like it. <laughs> and uh, when it goes on sale, I'm sure I'll buy it again. <laughs> That's such a personal preference. That's not a critically great rye at all, but it's my preference. Hey, we're down to the last two. Hope you're stuck with me. These are Canadians, uh, and they're both different than regular Canadians. Interesting that this batch, I just didn't have a lot of regular Canadian expressions. So this is um, a, high, a Highwood series where they teamed up with Wild Rose out of Calgary, I believe, and did a, you know, a beer finish on this, uh, finished in beer barrels, and it was great to try. Glad they did it. Uh, it. It had a little more dimension than the standard Highwood. And again, really cool they did it. Nice local pair up. Uh, the journey through it was not enough malt not to make it really uh, interesting enough for me. And in the end, I would not buy it again. So last one. Two Brewers peated number 12. So if you haven't heard me talk about two brewers, you know, they're from the Yukon, a couple of guys, first beer, then distilling, uh, and they work in single malt. This is a mix, five, nine-year-old, roughly, I think, uh, peated. This is a great, a great expression. If you like, if you like peat, even if you're thinking of getting into peat, it's not heavy peat. This is not ashy peat. To me, this was more campfire, interesting, bit of smolder smoke, a uh, little bit of, you know... I said it earlier, kind of grass, maybe it's just a mid um, vegetable kind of. So I liked it. I absolutely liked it. And uh, 
And what I'll do, because they keep releasing cool new releases is, is in their repeated series, what I'll say is I will absolutely buy uh, the release uh, 19 or maybe the next one after the, the, the next peated one that they have, I would buy that peated again. Wow, that was a talk, talk through a lot of bottles. Uh, and it's tough actually because some of them, as I said, you know, yellow spot three years to really remember the journey. So right now, uh, I hope what you're hearing is kind of a, a couple of quick thoughts that maybe give you a sense, hey, like, is that worth thinking? If not, and if it piqued your interest, uh, you know, look for other YouTube channels or, or check my channel because obviously I've reviewed all of these and that would be a way better like deep thought into one of those bottles before you grab them. Thanks for joining me. Uh, hope you're staying warm and uh, see you next time.